Hey everybody and welcome to DVS Films Podcast. My name is Kellen and with me as always is my brother Brendan and together we make movies with DVS Films. Today we're going to start talking about the specific processes and tips we use to get through the different parts of the filmmaking process. Today we wanted to talk about screenwriting. I think it's a, a good time to bring it up as we are currently in the screenwriting process for our next feature. So we can kind of highlight some tips, things you should avoid, and really you know, what our process is when it comes to getting through this uh, screenwriting endeavor. As always, be sure to take a look at our links online, specifically our Discord page. That is where you can become a super fan of ours. We make movies for our fans with our fans, and you can check that out online to be part of this amazing community that we have growing. So, you know, Brendan, really, I kind of wanted to start with just your overall opinion of, of writing. For me, I really do enjoy this process. I think it's one of the most creatives you have. I think it's really nice that you can basically do it whenever. It's very accessible. You don't need to have a lot of things set up. Um, in order to just hop right into the writing process. On the other side of the spectrum, I think it can be pretty tedious because again, you do have to just you know connect the dots from point A to point B. But overall, I do enjoy the screenwriting process. So what are your feelings before we hop in detail? Um, I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, my day job is essentially writing where I operate as a, um, a showrunner for a company. So, I mean, obviously telling a story is, you know, the heart of any kind of creative business. And I, I do enjoy it. Um, I think, you know, most people think that they can write things. Um, they struggle with just getting everything on paper and getting it to flow. There's a difference between having a really cool idea and a log line and trans and making that an actual script and going all the way through the process and you know not having any plot holes or not having any like um downbeats or having pacing issues i think to go from a log line to a completed script is is a very difficult thing it's a skill that a lot of people i think just struggle with and i think they struggle with it because they don't have a lot of reps they don't actually go through the process of taking a, a really cool idea and going all the way through and creating a 120 page script so, you know, my advice to people who are beginning the writing process or, you know, they're kind of messing around with their friends and they're like, hey, I got this really good idea is to flesh it out as much as possible. Um, I get log lines sent to me all the time. I get script ideas sent to me all the time. And while they are really good ideas, you got to be the one to just complete these things and get it all the way through because, Nine times out of 10, when I get a log line, I start to flesh it out. When you start to develop the characters, you start to develop the backstory of the characters, you're going to get a ton of problems to um, essentially figure out how to solve. And I think the difference between an amateur screenwriter and a screenwriter who's seasoned, who's been through this process multiple times, is they have the ability to fix those problems and you know get a completed script where an amateur person will either give up on the give up on the script or they'll just really struggle with trying to solve these the essentially the problems that are going to come up in any kind of screenplay that you're trying to write you yeah, know i i do agree i i think and this is something we'll hop into detail on just kind of what makes a, a really good screenwriter and what you know in our opinion a professional screenwriter needs to have which i think is what you mentioned the problem solvability you know it's really getting through the script and the hard parts fleshing out the idea of and making sure that you hit them, you know, home as much as possible. So this is going to be a two part episode um, on this topic. And for the first part, really, I just kind of want to go kind of almost like top level on just different things that are very important, regardless of what the story is. And then the second part, we're going to kind of hop into more detail of, you know, the process that we do to get these scripts, um, you know, maintained. And I think really the first thing I want to highlight um, you know, I think screenwriting is is absolutely amazing. I think what's really great with it is it's a very low barrier of entry. You know, anyone can hop in and be a writer. I think anyone can tell a story, but you were kind of alluding it to, I think the difference between, you know, someone saying, oh, I am a writer and someone being a writer is you have to write. Um, you know, I think anyone can be a writer, but I think not a lot of people actually want to be a writer when they actually see what is required to continue to flesh these things out. Because, you know, the, the hard part is, extending this idea getting into completed stage um, versus a log line versus a paragraph or two versus just uh, any of those things because you need to really flesh out that entire design because until you do that there's really so many little details and nuances and those are the details and nuances that you know producers are looking for they want to not have to worry about how they get from point a to point b they want to absolutely know and see the whole time and be impressed the whole time 
So, you know, I think one thing that I kind of want to talk about right now is, you know, we get the log lines and we get a lot of that information. The first thing that we always mention is get to a full script or a finished script. And I think right off of the bat, you just have to understand that you really need to look at getting that finished product or having something that you can turn in until then you're almost kind of still in the draft stage or a brainstorming stage. You haven't really quite crossed that threshold to a writer until you have a finished product, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think, you know, a log line or a, a quick description or blurb of your idea, or even just a general outline is just that it's just the start. Um, I think a lot of writers like this is the most fun, literally the most fun part of this whole process is coming up with an outline and describing like what your characters are going to do and how they're going to do it and how you're going to progress your story and how you're going to have this ending and intro hook and all this stuff. It's great. But until you get through and start fleshing out these characters and start fleshing out the pacing beats and start fleshing out like the action points and how you're actually going to end this movie, you know, you're kind of protected because you're going to, you know, there's no real problems with an outline. It's just essentially 15 beats that you're going to have as structure. And I think what he, what Kel said is, is super important that you have to be able to get this thing completed because it's going to flesh out your problems. But I think when you have just a rough draft, a first draft of a script, um, number one, it'll give you motivation because you did complete something, but then you can actually give it to other people for feedback. And I think that's like a big part of the process where, you know, I'll take a script and, you know, for example, right now we're writing the Into the Forest movie. And I have multiple versions of the script that I've already completed, but now I have a version that I feel comfortable with. I sent it to Kel and I said, look, like, obviously this isn't going to be the final version, but there's some things in here that are really good. There's things in here that need a lot of work. Um, and, you know, I'm looking for feedback on essentially what do we keep? What do we get rid of? And what do we change? So then the next version of the script that I write is going to be very, very close to one that we're going to shoot. And at that point, we can start to focus on the smaller stuff as opposed to the larger plot issues that we have right now with the script. Yep. And I think, you know, that's a great segue because the point I wanted to bring up with getting to the completed script is the way that we treat the process is each of these scripts gets completed multiple times, multiple times over from start to finish. You know, we say start here end here completely, write the whole thing again. A lot of the times the things that we're comfortable with stay exactly the same. Maybe they're slightly tweaked here or there, but you need to be able to get to that final product and rinse it over. And I just see a ton of writers who get stuck in the log line, get stuck in the outline, because again, that's the fun part. You talk about all of the nice things, all of the easy things, all of the fun things that are going to happen in the movie, but you don't talk about the details that literally bring it all together, which is incredibly crucial. And to me, the main role of a writer you know, you really do need to be the one that is taking care of any of these issues and taking care of any of these things that are popping up by basically saying, hey, nope, this is exactly what happens. We have it covered here. So, you know, for any writers out there, just really understand your goal is to flush out the scripts right as much as possible and get to the end of it, because that is really what we're looking for as someone who is going to be, you know, potentially picking up scripts or working with these. You want to get that final product. So, to kind of, you know, go right into that, since we are filmmakers, I think we have a much different eye on a script now compared to when we first used to, to write scripts. And it's the first thing I want to talk about, which is the budget. You know, we've mentioned multiple times in the writing phase, this is when you're the most flexible. This is when I have the most control over the budget, because literally whatever I say happens, wherever I put these people happens, whatever happens to them is happening. And those all have costs to them. And I think even if you just look at ourself, comparing the first few scripts we did, I mean, for instance, The Invited and The Whitlow House, I would say, are just way too ambitious and The Devil in the Room even. And so these are all ideas that in the time that we were writing them, we thought this was a perfectly easy filmable concept. And it turns out, no, you know, it's incredibly hard to make a movie. And until you go through that process, you don't know. So what would you kind of tell a screenwriter starting off first in the sense of if you want to have a movie made, especially on the indie level, you have to understand the impact on the budget that every word you put on the page has. Yeah, I mean, you, it's just the benefit of what we talked about before of doing the, um, you know, being able to screen 
write the screenplay, being able to shoot the movie and then be able to edit the movie. Um, all three of those phases are in my head constantly as I'm writing. And, you know, usually my advice would be write the script you want to write as like your first draft. I don't have a budget in mind for my first draft of the script. Now, obviously, it's going to be one location, you know, a couple actors. But as far as like special effects go, um, the cast, like how many people we actually have, I don't place budget restrictions on myself at this point. Now, you know, where we're at with the, the Into the Forest script, the next version of it, I'm going to start to consolidate characters. I'm going to start to consolidate locations. And I'm going to start to look at, all right, does this character really add value to the movie? And if they don't, we're going to have to cut them. Or can we combine characters? So if we have two characters saying different things as far as like lore or plot or something to just add value to the movie, can we combine them into one character? You know, how do we consolidate locations? Um, all this stuff needs to be thought about, um, you know, when you're doing the screenplay, because it's going to save you time in pre-production. It's going to save you time and money on production. And then as far as how you're cutting things together and how scenes flow and, you know, the different locations and how you properly pace a movie, if you can have that included in the, the screenplay, you're going to have a much easier time when you go to edit this movie because you already have sort of a blueprint that you can follow. And honestly, like my editing mindset is more involved in the screenwriting process than it is probably, you know, in any other process, even when I'm shooting, because you can shoot things, you get coverage, it's pretty easy to cut it around. But as far as getting in and out of scenes, as far as how I want to use montages and how I want to use B-roll to speed up or slow down the pacing of a movie, really a lot of that stuff can be done when you're writing the screenplay. So I think to keep all that stuff in mind and to you know be able to do all three phases of the filmmaking process will just make you a better writer. Um, and it will make your, your movie that much easier to shoot, especially if you're keeping budget in mind. I completely agree. And I think it's going to be something we always stress in the sense that if you can just get experience doing everything, it's going to improve everything in that rising tide of, um, you know, experience you're getting from each one of these movies. So I think that is always going to be a critical thing here. You know, as you were mentioning, you know, when we're looking at the script now, we understand pacing almost when things should happen. It's it feels like now it's more like coloring the lines and the lines were drawn just from our experience. But when we were first starting, you know, I, I think it's very easy to bite off a grand idea and to think, oh, this is easy to film. It'll look like this. And until we had the, the harsh realization in the editing room that, no, this isn't quite what it's going to look like. I think it's tough as a writer to have that. So, you know, my recommendation, um, I would say write as many things as you can write in the sense of don't limit yourself to a budget, but understand what you're writing and the idea there. I think, and, you know, to kind of touch on this, one of the issues I see with a lot of writers is they get fixated on a single idea. And if that single idea has a high budget, they almost kind of say, well, I just need to follow this budget. It needs to be like this. It needs to be like this. So the one thing I kind of want to touch on in that sense, as always, filmmaking is compromise. And I think as a screenwriter, the best thing you can do, and again, these are our tips just for someone ideally trying one to be part of the screenwriter or the writing process um, in the sense of, of getting something done is, really try and make simple ideas that can be executed on the indie side of things, but then also understand what type of budget it puts there. You know, is it great to have a passion sci-fi project that, you know, is a million some dollars? Yes, it's going to help your writing out tremendously as well too. But if you really want to be actionable, creating a story that someone can film within a budget is going to be probably the most important thing because I think me and you do it all the time. And it's something I kind of want you to, to, to talk about within the first few pages, we understand exactly how much this is going to cost. Usually, unless they hide something crazy, usually within the first, you know, five to 10 pages, we have an idea of, okay, this is a, a movie. And I would say the vast majority, 90% of those are way out of most indie films leagues. Yeah. I mean, it, it just depends. And there's nothing saying you have to write like these low budget indie movies. I still write, you know, million dollar blockbuster movies, you know, in my free time, knowing that the, the chances of these being made are super slim, but you can still write them. You can still enter them in screenplay competitions. We're not saying you have to write low budget indie stuff, but you know, if you're looking to film this stuff, 
you have to. There's just not, unless you can raise a lot of money, you have to shoot something that's, you know, super low budget. And it goes back to my philosophy. I'd rather shoot five $20,000 movies than one $100,000 movie. I think you're, you will learn much more with five movies. You'll learn through the process. It's a very difficult process to go from start to finish and have something that's almost perfect. Almost all the success stories out there are people who have done multiple movies. They've made a lot of movies. They learn from their mistakes and they finally get one that's just, it doesn't have any mistakes or has very few mistakes. And that's just, that's a good movie. So I think that's what you have to keep in mind. And, you know, as far as like the stuff that gets submitted or, you know, the stuff that people send me on a writing scale, like Kel said, I could tell within the first three or four pages, like I get a general idea of what the budget is. If there's a car chase, if something's on fire, if someone's jumping out of the building, if there's stunts, if there's special effects, it's going to be over a hundred thousand dollars. That's just what it is. And that's just something we just don't have the ability to shoot right now down the road. Yeah, we probably could, but I think you have to understand there's a difference between micro budget, which is like very small indie stuff that we're doing um, indie level budget, which is still low, but it's like 250,000 and under. And then like small budget or low budget, which is like what Blumhouse does. Uh, those terms and how the unions describe them is completely different um, than what might be in your mind. So you have to just understand you know, where your starting point is. And when you're communicating, communicating this to other people, you have to be very clear on like what your budget and what your goals are. Um, because when you say low budget, there's literally 10 to 15 different price ranges of like what an actual low budget, low budget movie is. Yeah. And again, you know, like you mentioned, I think it's perfectly fine to write these things. It's perfectly fine to um, do it, but just having that expectation in mind is the big one to me, you know? And uh, again, if your goal is to get things that are generated and created and, and become um, something, it, it's going to be always easier to have a lower budget, making it more and more possible for you to do so. And then also, I think another thing as a writer is you have to understand, you know, compromise in the sense that you're going to be working with other people other creatives and you know for us one of the nice parts is since we are involved in the entire process we have a lot of the creative control so um again talking high level things just what to expect as a writer do you want to talk about how compromise regardless in every element of filmmaking it really is compromised but how you're going to have to learn how to compromise with other people's ideas and how it's actually beneficial. Because I really do think that you can get blinded if you're the only person looking at a script for so long, similar to what happens in the editing room and just any kind of project where you don't have the ability to take a step back. Yeah, I think, especially in the writing phase, there's probably two different things that you need to be aware of. And one is just collaboration which is how you work with other people to solve problems. And the other is compromise, which is, you know, almost the meeting of the minds as far as like trying to get the best idea or trying to solve a problem. And it may not be your favorite idea, but you kind of give a little ground in order to get the movie done or get the scene done or get the problem done. And I think a lot of filmmakers and writers kind of confuse those two. Um, you know, collaboration is, you know, me essentially taking a script and saying, you know, what do you think about this, Kel? And I'm like, I don't really like this scene, you know, give me some better ideas or let's try and brainstorm some other stuff that we could possibly do. And we work together to get the best scenes. Is, is this the best pops here that we could put here? Is this the best plot line for this story? Um, so you're actively working with someone um, to get, you know, to pick the best ideas. And compromise would just be like, hey, like, we don't have this budget to pull this off. And that would be like someone's coming to me and being like, hey, I really like this idea. I just don't think you're going to be able to pull it off. And at that point, I have to go and revisit the, the idea and compromise. So, you know, when you're giving your script to someone else, you have to be able to be open to feedback is the big thing. And you have to be able to filter that feedback in a way that you're going to get the best script. I'm always looking for the best script as possible. And I think a lot of filmmakers struggle with just ego and they, they have this story in their head that they want to tell and they, they're very rigid and they don't want to make any changes and, you know, anything they, you know, negative feedback that's brought up in the screenwriting process is, you know, they kind of shove it aside and say that person doesn't know what they're talking about. And if that's the way you're going to go into, you know, collaboration, you're going to have a hard time. 
Now, when someone says like, look, we don't have the budget to pull this scene off, or, you know, we don't have the technical level to pull this scene off, then you go into compromise and you just try and find the next best thing or a way to do it, you know, on a budget. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing you could even get someone to be like, yeah, let's go. I love your idea. I love your script. Let's go ahead and film it. And they might not even know they have the technical level to film it. You know, I think that's something we ran into with the invited. That's something we ran into with a lot of our early movies is you just don't know until you actively film it. And since we do have the experience now in, in filming those, I think the first thing I wanted to touch on is the script is never more clear in your head. And I think to me, this is one after, you know, understanding and compromise being very critical in the screenwriting process just to get the movie made. I think the second major overall topic to kind of discuss is the script is never clearer in your head. The story is never more clear in your head. And I think this can mean a lot of different things. So let's kind of break it apart. Can you just kind of talk about how overall in your head, the story is always so much clearer. The little nods to the plot that you think are super obvious are going to get mixed in, in there and how we now have um, basically a, a process of at least regurgitating the same information three times at different critical points to make it clear because when you're writing the story, you cement it in your mind versus someone who's actually viewing it. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're talking about how the audience views your final product or your screenplay, you're always going to understand what's going on because you're writing these characters. You have the character depth. You understand their backstory. You understand their motivations and what they're trying to do. And then communicating that to a DP and to your actors is a skill in itself. And then how the audience actually interpret it, interprets that feedback in your story and I see a lot of people, um, and I just want to say a lot of people, it was myself when we first started out. And, you know, I watch a lot of indie films and they suffer from the same issue of they don't make it clear exactly what's going on in their film. We had a lot of feedback of people who were like, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand why this is happening, happening, or I don't understand like the backstory and small little details that, you know, needed to be highlighted more in the movie were just not brought to life um dialogue just misses or people miss you know parts of your story and for us a lot of our stuff is you know indie movies that are going to be on amazon prime they're going to be on tubi a lot of this stuff is streaming you may not have someone's full attention like you have in the theater so they could be on their phone and they can miss like little things they could be just listening in we're all watching movies while i'm working so just you know, having the characters say what's going on, trying to show what's going on, doing it multiple times through the movie is something that you really need to do. And once you kind of get this feedback and you're, you know, people are saying, I don't really understand what's going on. You start to look at like Hollywood movies, especially bigger blockbuster movies, and they do repeat the plot four or five different times. They make it very clear what's going on. Characters will say what's going on constantly usually before a final boss scene or just going to a third um the third and final act of the movie you'll have a giant breakdown of the plot and essentially will recap exactly what's going on all the way through the movie so then when you get to that third act you know exactly where you are and what the, what the characters are trying to do and i it took me a while to realize that and i think it is a a skill in screenwriting to make sure your audience is on the same page as you and they understand what's going on all the way through so I think that, you know, if you're getting feedback on your screenplays and you're getting feedback on your, your movies, it's something you should look into. Because once again, because you're writing this, because you're creating these characters, you're going to know the most about these characters. Um, and it's really your job as a filmmaker to make sure the audience is, you know, following along with you. They're following along with your characters all the way through the movie from start to finish. Definitely agree. And, you know, another thing really to quickly highlight, I think one of the misconceptions I hear a lot is, you know, they'll say, don't, don't treat your, you know, audience like they're ignorant or like that they can't figure things out. But in reality, I think it's, it really is the opposite. And you need to give the audience as much opportunity as possible. Because one of the things, the other issues is, you know, cell phones nowadays, you know, if you're watching it at home, you're typically on your phone and you're typically doing other things and you're typically multitasking. So you don't have it. So if you give the audience one opportunity to pick up on something and they miss it, 
well, there you go. It's gone. It's gone for good. They're not going to understand it. And I think one thing I kind of want you to highlight, because I think it's a difference now is if you look at our past movies, they all had a plot that was there, but I think it was a really wide plot that was very shallow where I think the difference now is we focus on a very narrow plot that's very deep in the sense that it's the same things over and over and over again. And one to kind of highlight, since we are right on the script now, was Into the Forest. The original Into the Forest basically had a story about um, a woman named Gretchen who uh, ended up uh, kidnapping kids in the woods. Her, her body was found with the Codus Gigas. Um, it ended up finding that people were hearing things. There's like shape shifting stuff there. People would go missing if they weren't there in pairs. All of these things are information that we dumped at the audience. And at the end of it, we had a ton of questions on the climax because I think what happened is the audience picked up on one thing and not all of them. And that's a risk that you have. And I think that's a common beginning screenwriter issue is that you pick a very wide detailed out plot when really you should have more of a basic and focused concept at first. What do you kind of think about that? Yeah, I always think that, um, you know, picking one plot line and sticking with one plot line, especially if you have, you know, you're shooting these in our movies are about an hour, 15, hour, 20 minutes. So there's not a lot of time to get the pace going, to build your characters and to have more than one plot line. Um, you have your A and B plot, but really for us, it's like the audience really, really likes when you build the world around your characters. And this is for horror movies. I don't have a lot of experience in anything other than horror and thriller but they really like when you build the world and you build the lore. And in order to do that properly, you have to pick, you know, one plot line, you know, one monster, give them the backstory of that monster. Um, and then make sure you're building rules. The, the monster has to follow rules. The characters have to follow rules and you don't want to break those rules. I think we had a lot of negative feedback and confusion because if, you know, characters are breaking rules, or if the villain or the monster is breaking rules, it gets confusing very quickly. Um, I thought we did our best job in um, the last movie we did, which is The Haunting of the Murder House, where, you know, this guy abducted and killed kids, and, you know, he was possessed. That's what happened. And then they get in the house, and, you know, bad things start to happen um, to the group. And in the first version of that movie, we had like seven or eight different people getting possessed. Some people killed themselves. Some people killed other people. So it wasn't really clear what was going on. And the feedback is just much better on this one. We picked one of these plot lines, the simplest one, the coolest one, and we just ran with it. And I think that's what you have to do. You have to keep the plot line simple. If you involve too many characters, if you build too much of this uh, plot line, it's going to be very, very shallow and you're going to really struggle to tell it within an hour and 15 hour, 20 minutes. And you see it a lot with a lot of indie films where they have to go back and do pickups or something to just explain something because the feedback they're getting from the audience is, I don't understand what's going on. Exactly. And I think that's one of the biggest ones. And then it's tough for you as a screenwriter. Cause you're like, what do you mean? I made it so clear. And you know, I, I always do love to try and get as much indie information out there. There's a lot of podcasts and things like that that I listen to. And I feel like I a lot of times hear this coming up where the person, they're like, I thought this was so clear in my head. I thought this was this. And you really almost need to guide them to that point. Um, and we'll kind of go into it into the next episode in detail of how we guide people through these checkpoints of here's the plot, here's the lore. But, you know, with the feedback we're able to get from our super fan community now in the Discord, it's absolutely amazing because we can literally track how well we're doing when it comes to keeping the idea. And we have critical points of, you know, did you understand he's being possessed? And if they're saying yes, that's what we're looking for. And we had essentially a fool across the board. Yep, we understand that them being there is risking the fact that they're going to get possessed. And that's the overall theme. That's exactly what we're looking for when it comes to what the stakes are. So by focusing in on one of those things, you're really going to help it out. And in your head, again, it might be like, man, I'm talking about this three times in a row. Like, nope, you got to really end up hitting it home and, and making it simple there. So with that being said, you know, I think, the second thing I want to really look at, um, you know, one being it's never as clear. The second thing is pacing. It never moves as quick in your head 
as it does when it's on script because you almost kind of just, yeah, okay, you know, this is a dialogue scene, but it's just a dialogue scene. Well, that dialogue scene was one location for about four minutes and it's just going back and forth. So I think now we do a much better ability of it, of finding these areas and putting the scares in there and making sure if one scare misses that we have another point for it. But do you want to kind of explain the difference between our first screenwriting and our latest ones in the sense that you would have desert barren of nothingness, but we thought it would move fast because we missed on a scare like the car started and gone or the, the scare and invited and just left you out to dry where now we ensure that even if we miss on one, we have another one ready to go in a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, I think pacing is your number one thing. You have to focus on pacing an indie filmmaker. Um, it's by far the biggest, the biggest issue, and it's going to be you know, the biggest thing to get your money back from these movies. If you have a slow, slow burn movie, um, unless the acting is absolutely phenomenal and the story is really, really good, um, and it's winning all these festival awards, it's going to be very uh -huh. hard to be able to pitch your movie if there's a slow down or it's a slow burn movie. It's just the state of, essentially the state of the union, how these, these indie movies that do well, um, you know, get sold and distributed. You, they want, people want to be able to turn on a movie and see that the person who's viewing the movie watches it from start to finish. Um, and that's how the streaming services gauge all their, their analytics and it, you can really put yourself in a place to fail or to succeed just based on the screenplay that you have. It's always very easy to slow down a movie. I can always slow down a movie with B-roll. You can add in montages. I always kind of get nice shots of the characters looking around. It's easy to slow the movie down. Um, it's difficult to actually speed the movie up if you're having to cut things and to get a full movie with and cut things and speed it up and hit your hour 20 mark is very, very difficult. Um, Cause once you start cutting things, your pacing is going to start to get all funky. And I think in the screenplay process, it's much easier to just go full speed, just go as fast as you possibly can, make sure there's action that each little sequence starts with a, um, like an intro hook and ends with a, like a little exit hook um, to keep the viewer watching through the movie. So you're kind of making a whole bunch of little eight minute sequences throughout your movie. Um, it's just much easier to do that. And I think you see in the murder house where the, the screenplay was written for it to be very, very fast. And it was almost too fast. And it was very easy for me to slow down certain parts of that movie by extending dialogue, by adding B-roll. We added a whole bunch of montages in there. And I had a lot of, um, you know, control over the pace of that movie. Where if you took something like The Devil in the Room, where it just, we had these long, slow, um, you know, scenes that just, we couldn't have them in there. We had to cut them out. All of a sudden the pacing starts to get really kind of funky. You're missing, you know, dialogue parts of the movie explaining plot and lore. You're kind of speeding it up and then slowing it down and speeding it up and slowing it down because you have to remove these things because if you don't remove the, the real slowdown scenes, you don't speed those scenes up. Um, you know, people are just going to stop watching. So I think that's the difference is just, you know, really make sure your movie is going as fast as possible when you're writing the screenplay, really, you know, put as much stuff in there as possible to keep it moving forward because it's much easier to fix a fast paced movie um, than it is to, you know, speed up a slow movie and keep the integrity and keep the story and keep the dialogue and keep scenes um, you know, that want to tell your initial vision of that story. I, I completely agree. And I think really this is the point I want to hit home because um, when I'm looking at this and I'll get kind of your opinion on this too, but when I'm looking at the screenwriting process, I think the biggest issues, you know, kind of that we're highlighting here is one understanding, you know, budget or what your goal is. Is it just to write for practice? Is it to get this thing made? The second is understanding that, you know, it's never going to be clearer to you in this process than to anyone else. So making sure that you drive the point home multiple times. And then, you know, as you were just kind of mentioning with the pacing of making sure that you're putting the pacing in there, 
would you say, because again, this is my opinion in the scripts that we've seen, that the vast majority of scripts just fall for these traps, where either it's too expensive for it to do, the plot is really only clear to the person who's writing it, and it's not paced as much. And I think the biggest reason that people fall for these traps is because the only way that we learned about these was making the final product, was getting to the editing room, looking at what we wrote and being like, oh, well, you know, this is what we wrote and we executed on it, but it just doesn't translate to what's on screen there. And I think that's the problem that most screenplays that I end up looking at end up having is they fall for the traps of, you know, making it more spread out when it comes to the plot, not focusing in, and then also having it, you know, delayed longer in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and if you understand these issues, right? And so say you don't want to actually shoot these movies that you just want to be a writer, you just want to write screenplays and send them off to Hollywood. Well, if you understand these issues, your your vision that you have for the script is actually going to you know come to life a lot closer to how you actually wrote the script. Because, you know, if your pacing is good, it's in the budget that you want and your audience understands what you're trying to do, well, the director who actually picks up your project, the producer, and also the editor is going to be clear to them that they don't need to make a lot of changes. I see a lot of screen, screenwriters get upset when they sell a script or they give a script to you know, a company and they completely change the movie. Well, usually they're going to change the movie because they're looking for the three things that we just mentioned before. They want to scale it down so it hits the budget. They want to add scenes to make sure that the audience understands what's going on. And then you know they really want to make sure that you know, there's a lot of good pacing in the movie. So they might cut a lot of stuff out just to properly pace it. So if you kind of understand this stuff, and even if you don't want to actually shoot this stuff or direct your own movies, just having this, being aware of this kind of stuff um, will number one, give you a better chance to actually pitch your script and give it better odds of actually getting picked up. But it'll also, um, you know, make sure it, like it'll allow the director and the producer and the editor to stick closer to your vision because there won't be such crazy changes happening from screenplay to the actual movie being shot. So those are, you know, the three major things that I think I see a lot of screenplays suffer from the kind of highlight. And I think, you know, like you said, understanding those, in my opinion, in our opinion is going to make you a better screenwriter. Um, just because it's something where if we work with someone who understands that versus we work with someone who doesn't understand that, um, you know, 10 out of 10 times, you're going to go with the person understanding these concepts and principles. So I think the one other thing I do want to kind of mention on, um, you know, I have two more things. And the first thing is going to be, do you want to talk on how I think there is almost a push too far in originality in the sense that people would be like, well, I want this to be something never seen before, or never heard of, or a completely unique twist or completely unique concept when what they're really missing and what I think a lot of science actually shows is people want similar with a twist. They don't necessarily want completely out there um, and new. They want something they're familiar with, but enough of something new to kind of get them to that point. And I just think this actually hinders a lot of creativity because I think a lot of times a screenwriter will be like, well, I don't want this or it's just like that. I need to find a way to do it. When really the best thing you can do is looking at taking ideas or things and how would you improve them? How would you make them your own? How would you have your whole twist? And the reason I'm bringing that up now is when we look at our writing process, is it not really just figuring out things that have worked for us in the past or, you know, what we've finally seen and figuring out how we can improve upon them or a different style of looking at them would be? Yeah, I think, you know, if you're going to try and go out there and try and write something that, you know, essentially a story that nobody has ever written before in their life, um, in the history of storytelling, you're going to struggle. It's going to be almost impossible. Almost all the stories in some way have been told already. I think it's your job as a screenwriter to just figure out, you know, what story you want to tell and then what twist or what unique, you know, vision do you want to create? And then like what kind of style, your own personal style needs to be, you know, embedded in the movie. So I think that's the big thing. I mean, you can take a whole bunch of directors and screenwriters and give them the same story and you will have a ton of different movies that come out. They'll look completely different. And that's what makes, you know, filmmaking super unique where you, everybody through, you know, the start of the process to the end of the process can put like a little bit of their own personal stamp on these movies. So I don't think you should ever really worry about, um, 
you know, making something that's similar to something else or that's, you know, been done before. Um, obviously, don't straight up copyright or steal someone or steal someone's work. Um, don't do that. But I think as far as like the stories that you can tell, I think it's your job just kind of figure out what makes it unique, you know, what makes it personal to you and then what kind of style you're going to try and, you know, bring out of that movie and, you know, just the different way you're going to tell it. And, you know, as far as like what we do now, it's true. I'm still trying to figure out the style, um, you know, of how I want to direct and how I want to make these movies, but we do things right, you know? So I always want to go back and look at the other 10, 11 movies that I've done before and pick and choose scenes that I thought worked really well or scenes that, you know, the audience feedback said that we did it really well and pull them and put them in other movies. And then, you know, looking back as well as like the stuff that we didn't do well, we just kind of just don't want to go back and revisit that. We just kind of like, all right, we tried it. It didn't work. And now we kind of pull it and go from there. And you'll see a lot of directors do this too. They're known for doing like the same things over and over again, but that's like a good thing because that's stuff that works. And, you know, once again, I think a really good movie is one that just avoids a lot of pitfalls. It doesn't do anything, you know, really, really well, or it doesn't do anything, you know, absolutely great, but it has enough scenes to keep you going through it. It doesn't hit any major pitfalls. And I think that's how you make a solid movie. The only way you're going to do that is by looking back at your career and, you know, picking and choosing scenes that you've done really well and just try and make them better. Exactly. It's, you know, building your, your tool set, it's building what you can do. And again, as a writer, it's something that, if you write these things and these ideas or you find a dynamic that works, I just embrace you to understand that you can always improve things. You don't necessarily have to say, oh, no, if I can't do this ever again or, or something like that, because I think you're doing yourself an injustice in understanding that, you know, you can always improve upon things. So the very last thing I want to touch on is maybe one of the more controversial things we'll talk about about the writing phase, which is, you know, you hear it all the time. I got writer's block. Um, and I think the main thing I want to just kind of mention about our personal opinions on these are kind of what we think that the, the best way around this is because it's a big topic. It comes up, you know, I completely understand when people are referring to it. Um, but I think it's a great way to get in the right mindset going into the next episode we have, which is on our process. And to me, I think you have to understand that writer's block really to me is someone not wanting to do the tedious part, which is putting the words on paper, then a creative block of what you can do. And I think real quick, we just want to describe how we get around our writer's block and what our kind of motivation is. But, you know, for me, I, and I think it's kind of something similar you have, you just have to understand that words on the paper are always going to be creative. And even if they're bad, they're creative in the sense that it lets you know, okay, well, this isn't really the idea and it might inspire you for something good. So the last thing I kind of want to talk about on this overall episode is, you know, how do you deal with a writer's block and what's kind of your opinion on you know, that process, because it is something that can, again, be the, the second void in the filmmaking process, I think, is the, the writer's block or not being able to get the script finished. Yeah, I'm not a believer in writer's block. Um, I think it's an excuse. I think writing. Um, so what I do is I write about 2,500 words a day. Um, whether or not those are good or bad words, I don't care. The only metric that I track is how many words that I write. I think writing is similar to going to the gym. There's some days you're going to go to the gym and you're going to feel great. You know, you're pumped up to work out. You're going to go have a great workout and you have a great day. And there's other days where you just have to drag yourself to the gym. You know, each set's going to be terrible. You're going to feel bad. It's just not a good situation, but you get it done anyways. It's the same thing with writing. There's days where I'll go in there and I could crank out 2,500 words, you know, before lunchtime. And then there's other days where I'll have to stay up till 11 p.m. to just get these words, all of them out, just because it's struggling. I'm struggling to come up with ideas. I'm struck on, I'm stuck on, you know, dialogue. I'm stuck on plot. And it happens a lot. And which is one of the reasons why I write multiple drafts of a script. Um, what I'll do is I'll go through a script and then halfway through, I'm like, this is just not good. Like, I don't like where this is going. But I don't stop. I finish that script because you never know where a little plot will come up, a little character development um, snippet comes up or a little piece of dialogue that you can actually use in the actual final version. I don't just stop and be like, I, I, I have to figure out how to do this and then just you know take a week off. I go, I finish that script and then I just start another version of it. And I just don't go down that plot line that I did before or go down the same direction. So I think... 
no matter what you have to just keep going. Um, I don't think, you know, I don't think I've never had a problem where I've been like, all right, I completely stopped here. I can't get this rough, you know, edit done of this script. It's just never been an issue because I just keep going. If there's a huge plot hole or problem, I'll skip over it and keep going. Um, but usually if that happens, um, there's going to be a big issue with the script. If you can't get through the first couple drafts of a script, you know, from start to finish without, and you're jumping over like major, uh, you know, plot issues or major plot holes, there might be a fundamental issue with just your, your overall concept. And then, you know, as you get it more finalized, there is something that's like what Kel said was like creative block where it's, all right, how do we, you know, address this issue? How do we brainstorm and come up with, you know, the best way to resolve this issue? But at this point, these are very small things. They should not be, you know, any uh, kind of crazy thing that is pages of pages of missing, um, you know, plot. These should be small things like how do we get this person to go to A to B or someone brought up this, you know, this plot uh, hole, how do we fix the plot hole? Or is this, you know, what are the best ways to actually kill this person with the special effects budget that we have? And the way you do that, we don't just stop. We come up with a whole bunch of ideas. And, you know, I essentially say to myself, all right, this is the best idea we got right now. Unless somebody comes up with a better idea, we're just going to roll with it. And that's just what you have to do because you're still working on a timeline. We still have to film these movies. We can't just stop production. So I think there's a difference between writer's block and creative block. Writer's block, if you're finding yourself constantly in writer's block, not being able to get the scripts done, I think you have to reevaluate your idea. There's something fundamentally wrong with it. As far as creative block, we just make a whole list of ways to get out of that plot hole or the better ways to do things. We have best, better um, in like, you know, what we want to actually accomplish. And then at that point, I just, I'm like, look, I think this is the best one. If we don't come with anything, you know, better from now to when we start shooting, then this is one we're going to go with and, you know, just move on. Yeah. And I, I, I'm glad you, you know, mentioned that I now have my sound bite for the newest podcast episode of you saying you're not a believer in writer's block, just because again, it is something that go out to any kind of screenwriting thing and that topic is going to come up. And I'm a firm believer as well, too. I mean, you just got to get the work done. Your job is to get through the writer's block. That's your literal job. And what you're just, you're running into the friction that comes from that job, which is actually making those things come together. And the best thing you can do is learn to power through that, learn to go ahead and put those words on the paper because it is only going to improve you in that process when it comes to just solidifying the idea making it better, figuring out what works. And then again, we only have those real creative issues of kind of filling in the gaps for it. So those are going to be the overall things that we look at when it comes from the writing process. Again, in part two, we're going to dive into our process specifically, how we go from an idea all the way to the finish and final draft, what that process looks like, tips in the between when it comes to getting there. But really, we just wanted to give you guys an overview of the writing process in our opinion. Be sure to take a look at us online. Make sure you take a look at our Discord channel. That is the community that you want to be part of because that is where we're able to reward our fans cast them have them part of our movies and we want to continue to do so so next episode we're going to get a little bit more in detail on the actual process but until then have a good one